okay, so I need you to start taking notes and um, um, let's title this with today's date. It is January 9th, I believe. And let's title this Multiplying and Dividing Rational Expressions. Multiply and divide. Okay, so before we jump into actually doing this, I'm going to review multiplying, dividing ratios, fractions with you, with the numbers before we go with variables, okay? So let's review real quick, see if you remember how to multiply this fraction. Two-thirds multiply to five-sixths, okay? So normally what we do is when we multiply fractions, top numbers go to, with each other and bottom numbers go with each other. Okay, as you can see, before we actually multiply, let's see if anything that we can um, cancel out. Well, this 2 and this 6, right? 2 divided by 6 is 3, okay? So now what you have is 5, 3 times 3 is 9, so the answer is 5, 9. Okay. What we could have done was multiply the 2 and 5 and got 10, and then the 3 and 6 and got 18, and simplify 10 over 18. But I figured that would be you know, harder, since we already have this factored out. So let's just cancel what we can. All right, now let's see if you remember how to divide fractions. What if I had given you this? 2 thirds divide by 5 6. Okay, when you were taught probably way back in elementary school sometime, when you do divide fractions, you take the second fraction and you flip it. You do the reciprocal. So it becomes this, 2 thirds times, instead of divide, 6 over 5. That's what reciprocal means. Flip this fraction. And now, um, let's see if there's anything we can cancel. Um, let's see, oh, the 3 and the 6. 3 divided by 6 is 2. So 2 times 2 is 4 over 5, 4 fifths. Okay, so that's just a quick review. Now sometimes you see complex fractions. For example, you might see this. 2 thirds divide 1 ninth. So it's like a fraction divided by a fraction. This is called the vertical format. You can rewrite this so it, less, it looks less complex and less crazy. 2 thirds, write it sideways, divide by 1 ninth. Okay, this is much more manageable. We know how to do this. All we do is we change the second fraction, we flip it upside down to 9 over 1. And I know the 3 divided into the 9 3 times. 2 times 3 is 6 over 1, which is the same thing as 6. Okay, so that's just a quick review on how to multiply and divide fractions. So what I'm going to show you next um, is how to um, do the same thing, multiply and divide fraction, but with huge numbers. Okay, these numbers I gave you here are just very simple. What if they're huge like this? Okay, if we were to multiply these two numbers, it would be very intimidating. I'm just going to cheat real quick. I'm going to take 64 and punch it into my calculator times 27. And what I get is this huge number. And then when I take 9 times 12, I'm going to get 108. Now, this is a correct answer, but we know we have to reduce the fraction, simplify it. And I'm looking at this, these two numbers, big numbers, and I don't know where to start. So, what we should, should have done was not multiply it out. Okay, don't do this. What we should have done is actually factor these numbers that are already small to begin with. Okay, like factor out 64. 64, think of two numbers that will multiply to 64. I'm thinking 8 times 8. Okay, how about the 9? 3 times 3? 
Okay. How about the 27? I'm thinking 3 times 9. And 12, I'm thinking 4 times 3. Okay. Since these are all multiplying, I'm allowed to just go 8 times 8 times 3 times 9. These are all multiply. When you multiply fractions, you multiply top numbers and you multiply bottom numbers together. Okay. So now they're all under one fraction and I can now easily cancel things out. There's a 3 canceling out with the 3. And then I'm seeing there's a 9 here. 3 times 3 is 9. So these two will cancel out with the 9. And I'm seeing an 8 and a 4. A 4 will cancel out dividing the 8 two times. So now all I have left is Okay, when, when 8 divided by 4 here is 2 over 1, okay? Don't forget there's a 1 there. So 8 times, so I'm, I have left is 8 times 2 over 1, which is 16. Okay, now remember when we multiplied these two big numbers and we got huge numbers on top and huge numbers on the bottom? I, there was no way I could tell it simplified to 16. But by factoring them into smaller numbers and then things canceled out for me, it made the job easier. Okay? All right, let's try another one. Let's do another division problem like this. 6 over 16 divide 27 over 12. Okay, so now let's write it sideways. 6 over 16 and then divide by the bottom fraction. The bottom fraction comes second. And now we change it into a multiplying problem by flipping the second fraction, 12 over 27. Okay, I would not multiply 6 times 12 and get some big number. Don't do the bottom one either. Instead, I'm going to factor, okay? Think of what factors are for 6. I'm thinking 2 times 3. And think of what times what is 16. 4 times 4. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply by the next fraction. 12, I'm thinking for, um, 4 times 3. 27, I'm thinking 9 times 3. Okay, so now these numbers are more manageable than these. And now I can start canceling things out. Here's a 3 cancel out with a 3. Here's a 4 canceling out with a 4. Oh, look at this 2 and 4. 2 divided by 2 will give you 1, 4 divided by 2 will give you 2. And look at this 3 and 9. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I look at what I have left on top. I have all 1's. And on the bottom I have 2 times 3 which is 6. So the answer is 1 6. Never would have known that these two numbers divide and, and get a very nice simple answer like this. Okay, so the moral of the story is this. We're going to factor to get the number smaller and smaller so that things will cancel out for us rather than multiplying huge numbers and make the job harder. Okay, so now we're going to go abstract by putting in variables rather than numbers. So here's the first one. Um, 6 over a squared times 2 over a to the third power. So we multiply. So far I'm looking at top and bottom I compare. I don't see anything that will cancel. So I'm just going to multiply straight across then. 6 times 2 is 12. And then I have 2 a's and then 3 a's. I hope this brings back memory of what you need to do. How many a's do I have? I have 5 a's, a to the 5th power. So what we could have done was just added the powers, okay? I did this slowly to help you remember the rule of exponents. So we add the exponents when we multiply, okay? So there's the answer. Let's try another one. Let's multiply these two rational expressions. They are fraction, but we call them rational expression because they have variables. Okay, I can look, since we're multiplying, I'm going to look for top and bottom things that will cancel. 
this x and x does not cancel, okay, because it, it is not a multiplying. If we were all multiplying every single number, then we could cancel it out. This number is not x, but it's x minus 7. So this parentheses go, this x goes with the 7, this x goes with the 5, this x goes with the 3. So none of these cancel. x does not cancel. So that means I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply them out. And I'm going to leave it unfinished like this. Like that, and you're done. You don't have to do the box method or vertical method to get this longer answer. This is sufficient. Okay? There's nothing, nothing that we can cancel, so we're done. So this is the answer. All right. Let's see if we can start getting more diff give you more difficult problems. Here's number three. And we're still multiplying. So I'm looking at these two fractions. We're multiplying. Okay. So this is a numerator, denominator, numerator, denominator. So if I can factor any of these, just like here, factor the numerators and denominators and simplify them by canceling. So I'm looking at this. There's nothing I can factor in common. I'm looking at 7x minus 21. Oh, there's a common factor here, common number I can divide out, a 7. So I'm going to change that denominator. I divide out a 7, I have x minus 3. So you divide 7 here, divide 7 here. All right, now I'm looking at the next fraction, and the 14x is nothing I can factor out. But I look at this big monster here. This has an x power of 2 with an x power of 1 and no x. This is a quadratic. That tells me I can factor using x method. So let's do that over here. I have an invisible 1, a 3, and a minus 10. 1 times 1 equals 1. I'm thinking 5 times 2 equals 10, but since I want a negative 10, I'm going to make one of these negative. I'm going to choose the negative to be with the 2. So I go 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 1 times 5 is 5. Add them together, and I do get 3. We match. So here are my factors, the 1 and the 5. The 1 gets the x. And then the second factor, 1 and negative 2, the 1x minus 2. Okay, I split parentheses around anything that has plus or minus. So here's the one that's got a plus. Do you see anything that cancels out top and bottom? You are right. This x plus 5 and x plus 5 cancels out to 1. And anything else? This won't cancel. Oh, look at this 14 and look at this 7. Okay. I can divide 7 to both. This will cancel out to 1. This will cancel out to 2 when I divide by 7. And now that's all I can do. Now let's look at the top. What do we have left on top? I have a 1 times 2, which is 2. Down here I have an x minus 3, put parentheses around it, and x minus 2, and I'm done. Nothing else I can cancel. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing the pattern of what, what the, the we do. We, when we multiply, try to factor out that there will be things that you can cancel, and then you just simplify. All right, let's do another one. Here's number four. Here's the first rational expression. And we're multiplying. Okay, so look at this. We have a rational expression here and we have a polynomial. All right, well, if I make this into a fraction, I go like this over 1. 
Now I've got two fractions I can multiply together. So now let's start looking for factors. Look at this first numerator. Anything I can factor out? A common number? Nope. So that stays the same. I'm just going to copy it down. What about the denominator? Ah, there's a common 3 I can divide out. Okay, all right, so that's done. This is the power of 2 quadratic. What comes to mind? Yeah, the x factor. So let's go do that. And the coefficients are an invisible 1, an invisible 1, and a negative 6. 1 times 1 is 6, and 1 times 1 is 1. How about 3 times 2 is 6, but it needs to be negative. I'll make this one negative. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Add them, and we do get 1. We match. So here's my first factor and my second one. The number 1 is the one that gets the variable m. So I'm going to get 1m plus 3, 1m minus 2, all over 1. Okay, let's see if there's anything that will cancel. Look at this m minus 2, m minus 2, bingo. Um, I should have put parentheses around this because this 2m doesn't cancel with anything. It's actually 2m plus 5. And any number will cancel with 3? Nope. So then that means we're done. Look at the top. I have 2m plus 5 and m plus 3. And then I have a 3 times 1, which is 3. So we're done. Okay, hope I, uh, you're getting the hang of this. There are two more problems I want to show you. Make sure you know how to divide now. We're going to divide rational expressions next. Here's the first rational expression. That's a divide symbol. Here's the second rational expression. Okay, now when we divide fractions, we take the second one and we flip it upside down. So let's rewrite this entire problem as a multiplication problem. So I put a dot here and flip the fraction upside down. Okay, so now we multiply. All right, let's take a look at the first fraction. I see x power of 2. Hmm, probably have to do x method. And this one, okay. I'm seeing 4 divides into 4 and 28, a common number. So I'm going to divide out of 4, and I'll get x plus 7. Okay, now I'm going to do the x method to the numerator. And I'm seeing 1, invisible 1, and a negative 25. There's a no x term, so that's 0 in the middle. 1 times 1 gives you 1. 5 times 5 gives you 25, but I need to make one of them negative. And let's cross multiply. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. You add them and you get 0. It works. So here are my factors. I have 1 and 5, so it's 1x plus 5, and 1 and negative 5, 1x minus 5. Okay, so there, I got that. Now I have to figure out what to do with the second fraction, this one here. See power 2, I'm going to do x factor for that one. This one is nothing in common, so I'm not going to do anything with the bottom one. So it's just going to stay as x minus 5. So let's do 
X method again. I see a 1, a 9, and a 14. 1 times 1 is 1. Um, 14 probably 7 times 2 gives you 14. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 2 is 2. Add them and I do get 9. Follow my factors. So it's going to be x plus 7 and x plus 2. All right, let's see what cancels. Okay, let's put parentheses around things that have adding and subtracting. This one should have its own parentheses. Okay, I'm seeing x minus 5 cancel out with x minus 5. I'm seeing x plus 7 cancels out with x plus 7. x plus 2, nothing. So, final answer is x plus 5, parentheses, x plus 2, all over 4. There's your answer simplified. Okay. All right, last example. Um, let's do a complex fraction, dividing a, a rational expression by a second rational expression. This looks intimidating, but it's really not any different than number five. This is one rational expression being divided by a second rational expression. So if you write it sideways this way, it won't look as scary. Okay, so here's my first rational expression being divided by the second rational expression. Okay, it's a division problem. Let's change it into a multiplication problem by flipping the second fraction upside down. I'm going to put parentheses around anything that has plus or minus. Okay. I don't see anything canceling out. But I see this x power of 2. I'm going to do x method. I'm seeing x squared, so invisible 1. This negative 4 comes last, so there's a 0 term in the middle. 1 times 1 equals 1. 2 times 2 equals 4. I'm going to make that one negative. Let's check it out. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Add them and I do get 0. Found my factors. So now I have 1 over x minus 2 times. This has now become 1 and a negative 2, so it's x minus 2, x plus 2 the two factors I found over here and the denominator is x plus 3. Let's check out for things that will cancel. This x minus 2 cancels out with that. Nothing else cancels. Top numbers I have 1 times x plus 2 which is this. Then down here I have x plus 3. Done. Okay. So basically what you've learned today is um, how to multiply and divide rational expressions, which are just fractions with variables in them. Okay, so this is all you're required to write down for notes. I do have more examples for you to try to practice before you start tackling um, your assignment from the book. So here are the problems I'm assigning for more practice. So what I recommend you do is write down the problems, give yourself some space to work on them, pause me so you don't see my solution, work on it on yourself, by yourself, and then unpause me to see if you did it right, okay? And again, this does not have to be part of your notes. This is just extra practice. You can write it on your notes if you like, 
or just take out a scratch piece of paper and just work on it. So here's, I'm just going to list out all the problems and then you can um, pause me. By the way, this is the Z variable. Again, I like to put a little bar across the Z. That way it doesn't look like the number 2. And here's the last problem. Okay, so you have a mixture of multiplication as well as division. And remember when you divide, just change the problem into a multiplying problem by taking the second fraction and flipping it upside down. All right? So now I suggest you pause me and try to do this on your own. Okay, I'm going to go now do this, the answers for number 7. Number seven, I can see there's nothing that will cancel out with top and bottom. So I'm just going to multiply straight across. Five times three is 15. And I have a y times a y to the third power, which means three y's. That means I have four on the bottom now. y to the fourth power. Okay, that was easy. Hope you match. Number eight, I'm looking at number eight and there's nothing top and bottom will divide, cancel for me. Because look, this x minus two is a number in itself. Put parentheses around that, parentheses there, parentheses there. So I don't see anything that cancels out. These x's cannot cancel out. So I'm just going to multiply. So it's x times parentheses x plus one. And that's all you can do for number eight. That was easy. Okay, let's look at number nine. Hmm, number nine. Um, I would put a one over here. Make this over one. That way you have two fractions. Okay, I would put um, parentheses around. Well, I'm not yet. Let's just do that. So now I'm going to look for a common factor in this numerator, the 2 and the 14. Yeah, 2 will divide into both of those. Okay, got that done. Let's look at this one, the 4 and the 6. 2 will divide into both of those numbers. Okay, so now that long fraction, okay. I'm seeing an x to the power of 2, big clue, I'm going to do the x method. 
I see a 6, a minus 13, and a 6. I'm thinking 2 times 3 will give me 6. And I'm thinking 3 times 2 or 2 times 3 will give me 6. Okay, let's try 2 times 3, see what happens. Okay, 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6. Add them together and you get 18. So that doesn't work. So I'm thinking, why don't we switch this 3 and 2 around, see what happens. Put the 3 on top. Now I get 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 times 2 is 4. That's 22. That doesn't work. Okay. That tells me, maybe I shouldn't have started with the 2 and 6. Maybe I should have started with the, um, like maybe a six and one maybe. So let's try that. See what happens. Okay, six times one is six. Um, and then six times one is six again. I'm thinking this doesn't look right to me. It's not going to work. 6 and 6 will give me 12. Okay, how about 2 and 3? 2 times 3. Not going to work because I don't see how I'm going to get a negative 13 out of this. I'm not sure this thing's factorable. It might not be. I'm trying all the different numbers and nothing's working. So, this thing's not factorable. Now we know. We just leave this as it is. There's nothing else we can do. So now, I'm, I'm just going to put 6x squared minus 13x plus 6. So I look at the other fractions. Is anything that will cancel out? 2 divided by 2, that cancels out. To 1 and these two don't cancel so we're done so the answer is a very messy answer but that's what it is okay so there you go that's number nine now let's do 10. I'm going to rewrite the problem here. Whenever you see a power of 2, that should give you a clue that you need to do X method to factor these. Again, this is its own group. Okay, so you cannot cancel this x squared and the x squared. This is plus. If it was all dot multiplying, then yes, go right ahead and cancel. But this is adding. So they're their own group. You can't cancel. I'm just going to make this over 1, and I'm going to have to factor this group, this group, and this group. I have to do it three times. Let's do this one first. I see a 1, a 2, and a 1. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1 again, 1 times 1 is 1, add it and you get 2. We do match. So that was an easy factor. This numerator becomes 1x plus 1, 1x plus 1. Okay, got that one. Let's do this one next, the x squared minus 1. x squared has an invisible 1 in the front, negative 1 here, 0 in the middle. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Cross multiply, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times negative 1, negative 1, add them, you get 0. 
found the factors. One x plus one, one x minus one. Okay, let's do the next one. I see a one, a two, and a negative three. One times one is one, one times three is three, and I'm gonna make one of them negative. Let's make this one negative. One times negative one is negative one, one times three is three, add them and you get two, we match. First factor, second factor. Okay, so we have a one x minus one, one x minus plus three. Okay, let's go look for things that will cancel. I have an x plus one, x plus one here. I have an x minus one and x minus one here. And that's it. So this is all I have left. Over one, I'm just not gonna bother putting over one. That's my answer. Okay, that's number 10. I'm hoping that um, you're getting answers that match mine or are very close to what I have. So here, let's do 11. 11 was a division problem. So to change it from a division problem, I'm gonna change it to multiplying and flip the second fraction upside down. Okay, anything that have a plus, put parentheses around it. So this is parentheses. This is parentheses, and now you should see what to do. Cancel out. On top, all I have is x, x over y. Oh, look at what else cancels here. x divided by x, cancel, cancel to 1, 1 over y. So that's 11. Let's go ahead and do 12. Number 12 is a division problem again. So what you do is you change the second fraction, flip it upside down, and it becomes a multiplication problem. All right, let's put parentheses around everything with pluses. Here's a group. Here's another. Okay, so nothing cancels here. All right, let's look at the first group. Anything common that we can factor up? Yes, a four. How about this group here? Common, a two I can divide out. Okay, now let's take a look. This second fraction, 9 and 15. 3 will divide into both of these. And this one has a k power of 2. I'm going to do this. I see a 1, a 6, and an 8. 1 times 1, how about 4 times 2 gives me 8, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2, add them, I do get 6, that works. So now, um, I found my factors right here. The 1 gets the K. All right, now let's look to see if there are any group that we can cancel out. Look at this k plus 2 and that k plus 2. Look at this 3k minus 5. And I'm looking at, okay, that, that doesn't cancel. 3 doesn't cancel with 2, but 4 and 2 do cancel. Um, 2 will divide into both of these. 
two in the bind. There's one time, two in the bind, so there's two times. So what I have left on top, two times three is six. I just have K plus four on the bottom. I'm done. All right, let's do 13. 13 is, is another division problem. So all we know that we will just have to flip the second number to make it become a multiplication problem. The reciprocal of z minus 1 is 1 over z minus 1. Okay? I'm going to put parentheses around that, around this, anything with pluses. Okay. I'm thinking I'm going to do x method for this one and this one. These two I, I can leave alone. All right. I see a 1, a minus 2, and a 1. 1 times 1, 1 times 1 is 1, but when I cross here, I'm going to get 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, add them, I get 2, not negative 2. So what if I make both of these 1's into negative? Negative 1 times negative 1 still gives me 1, and when I cross multiply, I get negative 1 plus negative 1, which is negative 2, works. So found the factors. So it's going to be z minus 1, z minus 1. I've got two of those. And then let's go see and factor that one. I see a 1, a 0, and a 2. See, no z term. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Add them together and I get 3 not zero. Um, and there's no other way to get two, no other numbers that I can use. So that means I can't factor this one. Okay, so this one is just z squared plus two. There's nothing more that I can factor. And the second fraction, there's nothing we can do there either. Let's see what cancels for us. This cancel with that. And that's it. So z minus 1 times 1 is just z minus 1 all over z squared plus 2. Okay, so that's 13. Last problem, 14. So we have a complex fraction, two rational expressions dividing. So I'm going to write it horizontal way so it looks less intimidating. First fraction being divided by the bottom fraction right here. I'm going to change this into a multiplication problem by flipping the second fraction. Okay, put parentheses around things with a plus. That's a 2, by the way. Okay. Let's see. First fraction. 1, nothing we can do there. W plus 4, nothing we can do there. Second fraction. I see a 2 and an 8. In common, common factor is 2. And down here, I just see 2, W, power 2. Nothing else I can do. Well, here's what's interesting. That cancels out to 1. 2 divided by 2 cancels out to 1. So now the numerator is just 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. Denominator, we just have a w squared. All right. So hopefully by this time you've got a lot of practice and you feel far confident to do your assignment now. All right. See you next time.